Okay, so we're going to officially get started right now. So hi, I know so many of you. <laughs> it makes it so fun. I feel like I just like rolled out the welcome mat to have a party with some of my favorite people. So I'm Kathy Heller. I host a podcast. It's called Don't Keep Your Day Job. It is all about letting go of the things in our life that don't make us feel lit up and instead living the life that is the thing you really want to do and you really feel like, ah, oh, this is the this is what I came for. This is what I came for. So I wrote that book. I just turned in my second book, um, which is all about abundance. And I have been coaching mostly women uh, for the last five years, reaching so many countries around the world, just feeling so incredibly grateful. I have three little kids, three girls, five, eight, and 10. I married the boy next door, literally. First, we were friends, tried to set him up with everyone I knew until finally my sister said, why don't you date him? And I thought, what a weird idea. Maybe she's right. Um, so married him, and I'll talk a little bit about my story later, but, and as I said, when you guys first came on, this is Colleen. She is all things brilliant. She's also just so aligned. I feel like I said, Colleen, I love having you on our team and running our team because just your energy is so, she lands the plane, folks. She lands the plane like that. So having her here is such a gift. And anyone who's been working in our community for the last year or so has gotten to know what a gift. You're such an awesome person. Thank you for being in my life. All right, so let's get started. First things first, you're gonna close your eyes. Okay, close your eyes. Here we go. All right, I have a hair on my lip. All right, so first things first, we're closing our eyes. And I want you to ask yourself, what did I come here to hear? What did you come here to hear? What do you need to know? What do you need to be reminded of? Just check in real fast. What did you come here to hear? Ah, oh, so good, right? Connecting to our intuition, to ourself, to that part of us that's not racing, just right here, that center part. Okay, cool. So open your eyes. And now if you feel like it, type it in the chat. What did you come here to hear? What did you come here to hear? So we're gonna have some fun this week. And for those of you, who don't know, just going to repeat the schedule. We're going to be here Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We're also going to be here Thursday. So you get a bonus day with us. And we are going to move into reality itself. Reality with a capital R. And over the course of this week, we're going to come to understand that we are all living in a trance. Most of the time. Not all the time, but most of the time. Because we have a subconscious mind. We also have a conscious mind. We're going to talk about the way that that works. And we're going to talk about who we really are and what life really is and what reality really is. And by the time we leave here this week, we're going to be plugged in to our superpower, plugged into what really is available. And so many lights are going to turn on. And you're probably going to feel so good. And at the end of this week, some of you are going to want to be doing more of this. And you will have an opportunity to do that with me if you want to. And if you don't want to do that with me, there's so many other incredible, amazing teachers who teach this work. And there's incredible retreats and there's incredible apps like Headspace and Mindset. And all Is it Mindset? I don't know. What's Insight Timer. So there's going to be places for you to go at the end of this week if you want more of this. And one of those places will be with me. And I'll share that with you at the end if you guys want that. Because I do these three-month intensive experiences. Colleen and I do them together. And they're a hybrid of live awesome sessions on Zoom. And also um, some video stuff that you can watch and some worksheets and things like that. But you're going to get so much out of just this experience, and it feels so good to be a part of it. So thanks for being here. So let's get started, okay? I want you to take a pen. Do you have a pen near you? Pen and paper? And I want you to write down, if you didn't have to be perfect, 
And if you were not in charge of how it happens, what would be like three dream scenarios in your life? Three things, three, three things. It could be anything. It could be, here's where I'd want to live. Here's what I'd want to do. Here's what I'd want to create. I'm talking stream of consciousness, free associating, write down what are three things that just, ooh, would that light you up? If you did not have to be perfect and you were not responsible for how it's going to happen, what are three things that you would love to see in your life, to experience in your life, write them down. And then if you feel so inclined, share with us in the chat. I spent a lot of time with Colleen, so I, I know her things. I can see it. I know the place. <laughs> you do. <laughs> I know what it looks like and all of the feels. Yes. There's a cute guy on a yacht. There's a lot <laughs> of things in there. <laughs> I feel like I'm manifesting for you half the time. That's great. I'll take all of the help. <laughs> you don't need it. <laughs> um, but I'm good at it. So I'll just like, you are, I'll push, I'll push some just, your way. Yeah. So what do we see? So Amber says to travel and Joanna says, speaking at conferences and Jacqueline says, create a multi-million dollar business. Mm -hmm. And Lizzie says, becoming a published author and hosting music and wellness retreats I see and living in LA and writing, being a comedy writer. I love that dream. I know it well, I live with someone who has that dream. Um, have 500 women in a fitness community. Samantha said, hi, Samantha. So many familiar faces in here. Lori says, um, podcast that she did that. Uh, thank you, Lori. It was great to have you in there. So, okay, great, 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 great. Loving this already. Loving how good it feels already to be defining ourselves in this moment, at least by visions of future things, rather than reliving the past and some BS belief system that's just total fake news. So already loving this. Okay, great. So now here we go. Little get let's look get a little deeper. Let's get a little juicier. I want you on your paper to take your pen. And before you put it in the chat, I want you to write down why that's not so in this moment. Why don't you have that already? Why are you not living in that place already? Why are you not experiencing? You're gonna, your mind's gonna give you an answer. And it, the answer is gonna. It, it, there's nothing to judge about it. There's no judgment here. This is called being mindful. You know, mindfulness. Part of the definition of mindfulness is paying attention without judgment. Did you know that? Like literally, part of the definition of being a mindful person is releasing judgment. So there's no there's no place here for judgment. There's no place for shame. We're just noticing. We're just a witness. We're just sitting beside the river and going, look at it. Look at the river. And we're, we're not pushing it right now. We're just witness. So what's the reason your mind gives you for why you don't have that? Is there the, I don't know how? Is there the, I'm too old? Is there the, I don't have the money? Is there, I don't have the right contacts? Is there, I'm not good enough at that thing? Is there, that could never happen to me? Colleen, what are you seeing as some of these answers in the chat? We can both kind of riff them off. I think it's fun when we both kind of read them out. Yeah, I still hit my blocks and walls. Um, fear is a big one. Oh, I see the fear thing now a few times. Yep. Yeah. Um, I see the not enough money thing. Yeah. Um, I don't take the time to call it forward. I haven't believed it yet. Okay. Yeah. Fear of being seen. That's very real for a lot of people. Jennifer said, because I still have the belief that I'm too old. Yeah. Um, not, uh, Samantha says she doesn't look fit enough. Mm. And, and there's more lack of finances. There's not enough hours in the day to do the work. Oh, Hannah, wait till we have fun. She's in the mastermind. We're going to have so much fun with you. Yeah. Um, okay. All right. So let's start to, let's start to unpack this a little bit. Okay. And as I mentioned before, and you'll hear a little bit about my journey, but Colleen, uh, we've been on we've been on similar journeys, both being seekers. She actually has a PhD in psychology, and I studied um, both at the UCLA Mindful Awareness Research Center for two years, and also I studied 
Jewish mysticism and Kabbalah in Jerusalem for three years. Um, I was a comparative religion major in college. Then I got certified to teach meditation, first to children, then to moms. Um, and then also manifested the hell out of my own life and business. And now my most favorite thing in the world is teaching other, especially women, to get the tools that are already here and to just turn the Christmas tree lights on, just turn it on. And it's so fun. It's so fun. So let's talk a little bit about how these things work. Let's just define our terms. So the mind. Okay. So the mind is divided into two, but it's not equal. It's not equal parts. So how much of your mind is your subconscious and how much is your conscious? How much of your mind is your subconscious mind? Tell me in the chat. 18%, 48%, 92%. How much of your mind is subconscious? And sorry if I pause, it's only because there is a delay on comments. So Samantha said 80% and Elizabeth said 75. And Whitney says 10 to 15 is conscious. And Kara says 90% is subconscious. And Lynn says 90% is subconscious. And sh yeah, Chanel says 95. And Colleen, what's the answer? Well, we can go as high as you want almost, but I'd say at least 95. <laughs> yeah. So it's at least 95. It's at least 95. So that means 5% of your mind is conscious. Now let's talk about the subconscious mind because we now know that your subconscious mind doesn't just take over your life. It can also take over your genetics. That's a big, big, very important piece of data that has to do with how we actually feel and our biology. And we will get to that in a second. So let's talk about your subconscious mind. So your subconscious mind is a software program and it has been running all the time, day and night, since you're about 12. We used to think that it kind of like gets shut at seven, but it kind of goes on until about 12 years old. So the biggest sort of pieces of software get sort of the coding zero to seven. And then up until 12, there's a few more things that can really, really slip into that program. And if you're not aware of it, and if you're not practicing meditation or any kind of mindfulness, um, you're going to be living a virtual reality. Like as if you have a VR headset on and you don't see because you can't see. You only see through this VR what your VR headset, your subconscious, BS, your belief systems, tell you is reality, even though it's not reality itself. So I often do this, my students know. So I pick up my phone and I say, you see this camera? This camera can see, and it sees so much more than I see. Why? Because if I take a picture, this camera shows me what is. If I look at something, I don't see what is. I see through my cognitive bias, right? So that's why everywhere you go, Sometimes you notice this more in other people than in yourself, but you'll hear people say things, you know, the world is so crazy. And then they're constantly seeing evidence of that, right? Or sometimes you see that people will say things like, oh my God, I love the West Coast because everyone there is so spiritual. They're so enlightened. They're just so open-minded. And then they'll have find evidence for that. Like, oh my gosh, there's so many raw juice places. There's so many vegans in the West Coast, right? They're seeing evidence of what they project. And then it goes on and on, right? Some people, they are gorgeous. They are fit. They are just crushing life. And then they say things like, I go on all these dates and it just, it's, you know how it is. You know how it is. All the good guys are taken. You know how it is. And so what happens? They find evidence of that all the time. So what's really, really powerful is to understand how much deeper this goes. Okay. So we have, when I was studying at UCLA, I learned that we have up to like 70,000 thoughts a day. That's a lot. And of those 70,000 thoughts, most of those thoughts are repeating themselves every single day. And most of them are worries or concerns. Why is that? Because the brain's biggest sort of evolutionary value was protection. 
So if there was a saber tooth tiger coming around the corner thousands of years ago, your braid, even though the tiger is physically bigger than you, if you could worry enough and anticipate enough, you could assess the danger. Okay, so let's think about this for a second. If 70,000 thoughts, 90% of which repeat every single day are worries or concerns, how does that actually affect our life? Well, it affects our life quite a bit because here's the deal, guys. How we think is not just something contained in our head. Thoughts become things. What does that mean? So how you think immediately decides how you feel. Every thought is not an isolated occurrence. Every thought creates a feeling. And those feelings actually create a chemical release in the brain. Often cortisol. Cortisol is a stress hormone. Now, if you think something's stressful and you feel it, and then you chemically release something into your bloodstream that creates stress. Does that affect then what you think you do or your behavior? Of course it does. And why I said that your thoughts actually affect your genetics. So Dan Buettner is a brilliant human being who used to be um, very, very much in charge of National Geographic. And years ago, he discovered something called the blue zones. And the blue zones are five places in the world where people happen to live into their hundreds more than any other place, places in the world. Now he looked at these blue zones and he said, why do these people live so long? What do they all have in common? Do they have the same climate? Do they have the same food? Do they have the same religion? What do they have in common? Does anyone wanna take a guess? What is most responsible for what gives them so much longevity? Now he wrote several New York Times bestselling books on this. And so you guys can read it. And I highly recommend that you read these books because they're life-changing. But what is it that they had in common? Do you think that accounts for their longevity? So Bridget says attitude and Sandy says meditation practice and Elizabeth says meditation. And we got more positive mindset and optimism. So you guys, either you listen to me or you're really smart, but I'm gonna give you a little bit more as to why those answers actually would create longevity in a person's health, okay? So it turns out they have nine things in common. There's actually nine things, but they were able to spend years looking at these nine things to see of, of the nine things, approximately on average, how many years extra do these nine different things give them which all add up to living into their hundreds. And so one of these things is a plant-based, mostly plant-based diet, not completely, but mostly plant-based diet, eating meat maybe five times, five times in a month, but mostly plant-based. And they said, you know what? That accounts for like seven to eight years of extra longevity. So that's cool, okay? So there's nine things and we won't get into all the nine things, but what was the most important? What was the one that made for the most longevity? It was exactly what you said. It had to do with a daily meditative practice. Now, why does that improve their life? Because what they were able to see in the data as clear as day is that the more somebody meditates, the less cortisol. The less cortisol, the less inflammation in the body. So cortisol is responsible for creating inflammation in the body. What do we now know? disease, right? The biggest issue now creating all disease in the body is inflammation. So what do people say? Get on an anti-inflammatory diet, reduce the inflammation. What if I'm telling you that the biggest thing that creates inflammation is cortisol? Now let's talk about this for a second. So your cells develop receptor sites. They develop receptor sites to nicotine. If you smoke, they develop receptor sites to sugar. If you eat a lot of sour patch kids, which I do, they develop receptor sites to cortisol. So now feeling bad is not just something that happens in your mind. It's actually a emotional addiction. Your body gets addicted to the hit of cortisol. So now you're in a little bit of a loop, which is why if you start feeling good by the end of this week, your body's actually gonna get a little bit uncomfortable and you're gonna crave 
going back into a place of limitation and self-doubt because your physical body is actually going to want some of that cortisol. So good to be ahead of that, okay? So now when you look at all of the things that I just said, it's pretty cool, right? It's pretty fascinating because it's one thing for me to say we have a subconscious mind, we have a conscious mind and how we think creates how we feel, but it's a whole other thing if I say to you, and now we know that that's responsible for our health, right? Because if I just said it about one thing and I just told you, well, I took this class at UCLA and we saw this in the data, you'd be like, okay, that's an interesting finding. But if then I talk to you about Dan Buettner and the work that he did around the world with teams of scientists, you go, I don't know, maybe I should find this actually compelling enough to start to try to change this about my life, right? Who's excited? Who's getting it? Type a one in the chat if you're starting to get excited. Okay. So I said about, I don't know, 12 or so minutes ago that the reason that we're coming together for this week is that we can really, truly see reality as it is, take off the virtual reality headset and see reality as it is. So you guys put down, these are the three things I'd love to see happen in my life. And here's the biggest reason why it's not possible. I don't have enough money. I don't look good enough. I'm too old, on and on, right? But is it true? And is it true that that's how reality works and that that's what's needed for you to actually have the experience of the future you can stop dreaming about? The answer is 100% no, reality does not work that way. But your subconscious mind is obsessed with telling you how it works and it's completely wrong. It's like when people used to say that the earth was flat and there were people who held on to that. They held it but they were wrong. So too, reality with a capital R, actual reality, not the reality in your subconscious, but the actual reality that exists is completely and totally abundant and completely and totally expansive. It's infinite. And abundance is the greatest gift that you, allowing that in your life, give to other people. So I told you that I studied mindfulness and quantum physics, and I also studied Jewish mysticism and Kabbalah in Jerusalem for three years. And I want to tell you something. There's a Jewish mystic by the name of the Maharal who lived in 1500, and he said something so beautiful, and it's such a great metaphor for abundance and how your abundance is literally life-giving to everything around you. And here's the example. If you took a candle and you light this candle, how many other candles can you light from this one candle? Tell me in the chat. 10, four, how many candles can you light with one flame? So that's an obvious answer, right? You can light an infinite amount, but here's the real kicker of what he said. As you're lighting these other candles, and you take this one flame, and this one flame lights the other lights, how much of its own flame does it lose when it lights another light? How much of the flame does it lose by giving light to another light? How much? 1%? 80%? How much? You're right, Catherine. Stephanie's got it too. Zero. It loses nothing. Hmm. So that's interesting. So that's what abundance is. That's what the world is. So when you have something called love, which is what you are, you are love itself. How many people can you love without losing any amount of love? an infinite amount. Okay. So Deepak Chopra was on the show on the podcast a couple months ago. We talked about his new book, which is called Abundance. Now this is a man who comes from India. So he is not a stranger to poverty or the circumstances in which people live. And yet he still sees the world as it is which is abundant. 
So he said to me, Kathy, every acorn is the promise of a thousand forests. If you look at the Amazon, how many species of plants and animals? It's, it's beyond. If you look at people, right? The different ways that we all have lived our life, even if you have a sibling, you're not the same, right? She could have grown up in the same house and yet her experiences and who she is and her slightly different perspective on it, it's just, it goes on and on. We each are like unique snowflakes in this world. So it is such a gift for us to really and truly get what money is about. And this is just one of the things that we're going to talk about this week. Because the more money comes into your ecosystem, the more goes into the ecosystem of the world. So let's look at the world for a second, okay? So Marianne Williamson was on the show a couple of months ago also. We had like a few back-to-back -back amazing conversations on the podcast. And she said, you know, it's a great way to look at reality itself because we get really confused in our subconscious mind. Our subconscious mind is very limited because it lives in ego, okay? So we have two pieces, just like we have two parts of the mind, the conscious and the subconscious. We have kind of these two parts of the human experience. One is living in ego and one is living in the higher self, in that center place, that place when you pray or you close your eyes and you make a wish on a candle or you, you meditate and there's this part of you, you can kind of find it where it's beyond the story in your in your mind and and that part of you that that thing it's called consciousness and it is connected to that which is was and always will be and we have a sense of it but then we get put back in trance in our subconscious and so when we're in ego in our subconscious we see the world as separate so i see colleen as well she lives right now in Victoria Island and I'm right now living in Florida and she has one son. I have three girls and here's how she's different than me. And she's got a PhD and I don't and da, 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 and that's all ego. And we do that. And then we compare our egos to other people's egos. But really if we took off the layer of all those stories of all that narration of all the subconscious. And I just look at me and Colleen, we are one. We are completely and totally connected in that place of consciousness. There's no way to separate us. So look at the ocean, for example. This is the Marianne Williamson piece. So she said, if you look at the ocean, wouldn't you be crazy to think that one wave is separate from another wave? Like where does one wave stop and, and has a separate identity to another way, it doesn't. But to go even further, she said, isn't it true then that the waves are actually the ocean themselves? How is the wave separate from the ocean? Now, now we're starting to cook with gas, okay? So part of studying um, Jewish mysticism and Kabbalah and mindfulness and meditation and quantum physics, what's so exciting is that they all say exactly the same thing. So Einstein, you could call him a Kabbalist. Truth is he was a Jewish guy, but I don't know that he ever studied Kabbalah, but maybe he did. Why would I hold that against him? I may meet it. But the point is that they all say the same thing, which is there is just one field of energy. And so life is much more of a radio than it is Jenga blocks because we are actually swimming in an energetic field. And that is physics, that is science, that is everything. Like we are not separate right? One wave isn't separate from another wave and the wave is not separate from the ocean. So what does that mean? It means if God is the sun, just look, and he's not, you, she's not, but I'm just using it as a metaphor. Let's say God was the sun. You would be a ray of that sun, your consciousness, your soul. So you are infinite and you are an expression of this whole alpha and omega, this thing called life force, universe, God. Why is that important? Because as Wayne Dyer said so well, we, we don't get what we want. We get what we are. And if you've never seen that, write it down. 
we don't get what we are. We get, we don't get what we want. We get what we are. We don't get what we want. We don't get what we desire. We get what we are. Why is that important? Because you came to this workshop and I told you this is about how to have the most abundant year, how to have the most abundant life, really. How do you have that? Well, when you are connected to that, which what is what you are, that's all that comes back. And you are abundance itself. So when you can step out of that subconscious that's constantly telling you all of the ways in which you are limited and all of the ways in which you need to protect yourself because other people are so separate from you and you need to be competitive or judge yourself compared to them. I mean, there's so much garbage in the subconscious. And what I now teach people is it is the most egocentric thing in the world to have these limiting beliefs about yourself. Let me say that again. How is it that having limiting beliefs is the most egocentric thing in the world? Put it in the chat if you figured that out now. Why is that so egocentric? Because the ego thinks it's not enough. Does the soul think that? Does your consciousness think it's not enough? No. And when we realize that we are made of these two parts, this ego, it's kind of just like the body, right? The faucet. And we are only here to kind of move into alignment with our soul, which is like this expression, this ray of the sun, right? This unique ray of the sun, right? Each of us comes to play a unique role. It's kind of like light shining through a prism and then it shoots out indigo or purple or green. It's like how amazing that God infinite goodness can be expressed as green, as yellow, as teal, as purple. That's the uniqueness of every soul. It's a unique expression of this divine energetic that's all one, that all works together, okay? So our job is to actually have the, enough humility that we surrender this body, this ego, and just allow sort of like if we, if our bodies, as Marianne Williamson said, your ego is the faucet. Your soul is connected to the water. No one cares what the faucet looks like. It's the water that's doing the heavy lifting. You could have a hose outside or a beautiful 18 karat gold faucet, but if no water comes out, it's not interesting, right? It's not interesting at all. You need to drink something. You need to get a pot of water. You need the water, not the faucet. So we spend so much time on your ego. My, how many followers does she have? What does she look like these days? You know, she's let herself go. What's going on though with the faucet? versus the water. It's the water that does the heavy lifting, right? It's the water that does the heavy lifting. So the idea here is we want to move out of ego and we want to surrender that so that we can actually be a match, a vibrational match for all this stuff that we desire, which is already done. It's all in the field. It's already happened. Like the clients that you want to eventually have with this business you want to start, they already exist. The market, the trillions of dollars that people are already spending and trading, that already exists. You just want to be a part of that, right? You want to be a match for it. The love in the world that you want to bring into your life, that you want to give to other people, the people you want to touch and inspire and impact, they're already there. They already exist. All of it's already here. It's already done. So it's really more about being connected to a radio than it is worrying so much about what you have to do in the physical 3D because the 3D is really not what's doing the heavy lifting in this world. An atom, how much percentage of an atom is energy and how much is physical? How much of an atom? Everything is made of atoms. Every single thing in this world that looks three-dimensional is made of atoms, every single thing. So how much is physical of the physical things? How much of an atom is physical and how much of an atom is energy? How much? What percentage of an atom is energetic? So Melissa said most of it and Kara and Liz have heard this before and as you heard this before. Yeah, so an atom is made of 99% vibration and it's less than 1% physical. And that's literally what makes up every single thing that you see with your eyes. So we live in a vibrational energy 
or do we live in a physical world? It's energy. It's a vibration. So if it's a vibration, how much do we need to focus on that? Now, if we have a personal reality in our life, this is your personal reality, certain circumstances, right? This is how much you like your relationship. This is how much money is in the bank. This is how much your health is, is good or bad or whatever. How much of your personal reality do you think is affected by how you think and feel? So it's everything. It's everything. So how I think creates how I feel. And then how I think and how I feel, does that determine what I do? Right. So if I think a certain way and I feel a certain way and I do a certain thing, does that affect what's, what's showing up in my life? Yeah, 100%. So what we need to do is get that the world is really mostly vibration. And if I'm walking around and I'm in ego, I'm in this trance of the subconscious mind, I'm in self-doubt, I'm in all the shame and scarcity, scarcity, scarcity is man-made. That is not a law of the universe. We just talked about that candle. Sorry, there's no place in the world you can go. See, the law of the universe is scarcity. It's actually not. So if I'm in that place all day long, how is that affecting my vibe? Well, it's really affecting my vibe because the more you think a certain way that makes you feel bad and you produce cortisol, you actually are out of alignment. You actually don't have any space to even be available for those good emotions. And when you feel enthusiasm, compassion, passion, excitement, open-heartedness, not only are you starting then to get these creative downloads, like, ah, oh, I just got inspired in a moment. I just had this idea. That's Walt Disney flying in the helicopter, looking over hundreds of acres of swampland in Anaheim. And he goes, do you see it? Look again, look what's there. So we've got to be available for the download, but not just that, the more you are in this higher vibe, you're healthy, right? Your body, you're physically changing your genetics at that point, but you're also affecting other people around you. And next thing you know, you're just connecting with and drawing towards you like a magnet, anything that's in that exact same vibration. So a good way to look at this is, so I'm, I'm also a musician. I used to do music for 10 years. That's what I did as I played music and wrote songs for film and TV. And that was my first sort of entry into the business world. If you take two instruments. Let's say, let's say you take two guitars and you put them next to each other and you pluck an A string on one guitar. What happens to the guitar next to it? You take two guitars, you pluck an A string on this guitar. What happens to the guitar next to it? Colleen, do you know? I don't think I've, <clears throat> I don't think I've ever tried that. No. See, it's a fair answer. Even a PhD can say she doesn't know something. I don't know. <laughs> I, I have an it. idea, but I'm curious. Okay. <laughs> okay, so if you take two guitars and you pluck this A string on this guitar, the A string on the other guitar vibrates. Yeah. Not the D string and not the C, the A string. That's called resonance. Mm. That's how the universe works. That's actually how it works. It's like a tuning fork. What you send out is what comes back. So as Esther Hicks says, can you be disappointed and get what you want? No, you're not a match for it. Unless you are wanting to be disappointed, then you'll, be, you'll get that back. So when you wake up every day, and you get beyond the subconscious program and you say, I am, forget who I am, my story, da, da, da. I am this piece of the infinite. How do you feel? You feel whole, you feel excited, you feel expansive. You feel totally prepared, right? There's no imposter there. You're just here to be a light, right? Like when a baby's born, I have, I have these three gorgeous daughters. First time I held each one of them, 
I was just completely overwhelmed by how much wholeness and high vibe, like when people see a baby, they actually like get quieter and they look at this baby and they lean in because it's so whole and it's so love, right? It's just, that's how we come in this world, like so aligned with our consciousness. And then what happens? Like that baby, such a highly magnetic like light, right? That it can just bring out, you know, we see how it like starts to be a match. So we want to design our life from a place of consciousness, not from the subconscious. And we want to feel all of the feelings. So when you think about your future, those things you wrote down, what beliefs and what thoughts belong in that future? If the vibration does the heavy lifting of how this world works, what, what's in that vibe? My rabbi, David Aaron, he wrote an amazing book called Endless Light. I think Simon and Schuster published it. And he was once on a panel with Deepak Chopra and Larry King. It was him, Larry King, and Marion Williamson, which would have been so fun to be at that taping. And he talks about how the word Kabbalah comes from the word Kabbalah. So the word Kabbalah literally just means to receive. So he said to me once, he said, Kath, you know, people talk about the law of attraction, but the Jewish mystical approach would be the law of reception. Because the law of attraction, he said, it still sort of maybe insinuates that you're attracting something that's over here and bringing it over here. But he said, on a really deep level, if it's the law of reception, it means you just have to open your palms and receive what's already coming, what's already being offered. So that's more like an actual receiver. So think of a receiver. If I put a radio right here, and who the hell uses a radio ever anymore? But let's say I put a radio here and I tune the dial right here in this actual room. Right now, if I had my husband come up and put a radio here, I could tune the dial and I could hear Latin music. I could tune in another few degrees and I could hear hip hop music. I could tune another few degrees and hear pop music. I could even tune it to AM radio and listen to like some really, I don't like the news. I don't know, some news show or whatever, sports broadcast but it's all literally right here, right now in this room. It's 1245 Eastern. It's literally right here, right? But in order for me to hear it, I need to tune the receiver to a different channel. And then I hear a completely different song, a completely different experience. Yes or no? True or false? In this room right now, I can listen to Latin music and dance it out to the samba, or I can turn it and hear Justin Bieber, depending on what I'm receiving. Where's my receiver tuned to? So all day long, as you go through your life, where is your receiver tuned? What's playing? What song is playing? So most of the time, we are in this program of our subconscious. And what we want to do is step into reality itself. So I have a few beautiful extra more things to share, but I want to turn to Colleen and see if there's anything that she's thinking right now that she's like, oh, I also want to add this point. Yeah. I love the metaphor of the receiver because the challenge for most of us, right. is every single time there's something that we desire, right. Whether it's the relationship, whether it's the money, whether it's a different job, it doesn't matter. Right. When we're asking for something, we are on a different channel than we are on when we are going to receive something. And so I want everyone to start having an awareness of that aspect as well. Of course, there's moments where we need to ask, right? That is the contrast of what creates the beautiful things that we want in life. But if we continue to stay on the channel where we're asking, where is it? When is it coming? Why does she have it? Why is it not here for me? When will it be my turn? We are tuned to a station of asking. We are not actually tuned to the station of receiving. And so when we talk about all these different vibrations that exist that we can tune into, when we really want to open our palms and allow in the desires, we have to change that frequency around the awareness of what isn't here and shift into the frequency of how we're going to feel when we actually have what we want. And that's really the heart of the work because we're so conditioned 
to trying to figure it out. That's how we're taught. We're like, what's our goal? Let's reverse engineer it. Let's figure out all the steps that we're going to go through to make it happen. Let's be industrious. And that's all we've been taught for the most part through our world and through our life. And we can make some progress, but we often get confused and we struggle. And so we're really here to help open your heart and your mind to this idea of, oh, it's actually not just trying to figure it out. I'm actually going to learn to shift energetically. I'm going to shift how I'm feeling so I can tune in to the reality that has what I want. So beautiful. And I love to talk about this also um, from the idea of feminine and masculine energy. And as we know, if we study anything about biology, every person has testosterone and estrogen going on. We have a different cocktail depending on who we are and all of those things, but there's a balance that's, that goes on. But when I say this, because we live in a world that really, really, really praises the masculine approach. What does that mean? So the masculine, look at the anatomy. Okay. So the masculine gives, it asserts, right? It does. And what does the feminine anatomy do? What does the egg do? The egg sits and receives. Does she need to go anywhere? No, 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 no. She is there, boom, and pulls it right toward her, draws it right to her like a magnet. And then what happens? How much of the process of building a baby is, is it more masculine that goes on or more feminine? Well, the masculine is a 100%. It's imperative, correct? You need both. Without that 1%, that moment, that lightning, right? Nothing comes to that egg. But it's also true that once that happens and she receives it, she does the 99%, doesn't she? The feminine energy, whoa, like that. Now, we live in a world where every single day I speak to hundreds of thousands of people and they ask me the same question, what do I need to do? And the good question is really, what do I need to be? How do I need to be? Because the feminine energy is all about how she is being, not doing, being. And as a being in that place, dropped into alignment, she can draw it to her. So think about it. People said before, like in the chat, the reason I don't have this, one woman said, I don't feel like I look fit enough. Let's talk about Lizzo, for example. She is somebody who, and you guys probably know who she is. If you don't, you're welcome. Go listen to her music when you're when, when you're done with this because it's those songs are so good. But the vibration is so intoxicating, it's so high that nobody's thinking about, you know, she's not a zero, you know, she's not a size two. Instead, we're like, watch out, world, because there's an atom bomb of energy coming out of this woman. And she's so in her wholeness, it's so sexy, it's so alive, it's drawing every single thing to her. It's about damn time, yeah. <laughs> so this is the work. And over the course of these few days, we're going to drop into it. We're gonna start to actually show you the real how, which is how you can actually come into tuning your receiver so that you draw it to you, right? So that it's not about how much more do I have to hustle? If you wanna have abundance in your life, be a matching vibration to abundance. You ever know those girls that wherever she goes, and she's not even the girl, like sometimes you'll bring her with you. She's your wing woman to a party. She didn't even change out of her yoga clothes. She's got her hair messy, whatever, but she's so in wholeness that every guy asks for her number, right? You ever meet certain people? It's just, they're a match for money wherever they go. Like, oh, you want to get in this NFT thing I'm doing? Hey, you want to get in this? Hey, I'm going on a yacht. You should be there. You should come. It's like, it's just a vibrational match. It's a vibrational match. The universe constantly is coordinating everything to line up with what you are. You get it back. You hit the A string, the A string vibrates on the other guitar. So instead of worrying how this is going to happen and why you're so limited. And that's looking at the world in 3D. Let's look at the world as it actually is, which is a vibrational web. It's a field. And you are going to tune your vibration and you're going to get back exactly what is a match for that. 
And so part of the work we're going to do over this week is start to look at the BS, the belief systems you have around money. Because if you have a lot of stuff in your mind, that's not just in your mind, remember, nothing stays in the mind. So if you think a certain thing that makes you feel a certain way and on a cellular level, you have an aversion to money, you're not a match for it. So take a second and answer this, fill in this blank, however you want. The way you grew up, the way you were taught about money, what your mom said, what your dad said, what your grandmother said, I don't care who it was, we're gonna free associate right now. I want you to fill in the blank. Money is what? Money is what? Money is hard earned, money doesn't grow on trees, money's the root of all evil, money is amazing, money is everywhere, money is only for people who are greedy. I don't know, what is it? What's in there? What's in there? Money is scarce. Money is hard to come by. Money takes hard work. Imagine I taught you that oxygen is hard to come by. That oxygen, plenty of oxygen, people who live at a good altitude, that's, that's selfish. Imagine I told you that about water. You know, water, if you have a lot of it, you should feel bad. There's people who don't have clean water. You shouldn't have too much water. How much water do you have? How long do you shower? How many showers do you take a week? You should think about that. You should be really careful. Like it's crazy, okay? So let me tell you what the Talmud says about money. So Jewish mysticism says that money is like rain. When rain falls in a garden, whatever the rain touches, it grows. So if rain touches the weeds, what happens? Weeds grow. If rain touches rose bushes, what happens? Roses grow. So if a person is aligned, person has good integrity and intentions, and they have more resources of any kind, especially money, they'll be even kinder. They'll use it for even more good. If a person doesn't have good intentions, whatever resources they have, but especially money, they'll use it for more of that. Money is not the defining factor in what makes a person good or bad. Can you think of evidence in the world of anybody who has money who is not a good person? And we all can, right? We've all watched the news, we know. Can you think of evidence anywhere in the world, maybe someone you know, maybe someone in the world who doesn't come from money, who was not a good person? And the answer is, of course. Right? We see constantly that there is so much violence and it's not all created by people with money, correct? Okay. Now, can you think of evidence of people who have no money who are so damn generous? I can. Can you think of any evidence of people who have, have a lot of money who are so generous? Of course, every hospital has about 10 buildings. They all have a name on the building. Somebody was generous. Every museum, every arts program, the clean water that's being given to different parts of the world right now, there's a name on it. Sometimes it's anonymous. Mother Teresa said, it takes a checkbook to change the world. Okay. So is money the issue? Whether you're kind or you have money, do you have to make that decision? Yes or no? Do you have to make a decision about being kind and having integrity or having a, having a lot of money? Do you have to choose? No, you don't. And is money everywhere or is it hard earned? It's everywhere, all day, all the time, all day, all the time, all day, all the time. There's so much of it. But if you don't see it and if you're not a match for it, it's just that. You're not a match for it. We don't get what we want, we get what we are. How much of your day do you walk around thinking and feeling more than thinking and feeling I am abundant, I am infinite, I am a extension of the creator of this universe and I feel it and I'm swimming in it and wherever I go, that energy just, it precedes me before I even walk in the room. Well, most people don't feel that way. In fact, when I ask people how much money 
would you want to make? They tell me. And then when I ask them, why did you charge that? Or why did you write that? They say, well, that's how much I think I'm worth. And I say, how much you're worth? There is no price because your worth is called infinite. When money comes in, do you have it? Do you ever have the money you have? No, you don't. Because money is like blood in the body. It keeps moving. So if money comes into my ecosystem, it goes in my bank. What's happening right now with the money in the bank? Well, it's being used to fund other things for other people. What happens if money comes into my ecosystem and I want to make my house look nicer? Did I just improve the value of my neighbor's house? Yes. Instantly. What happens if I have money and I want to go hire three people? Did I just give them money? What happens if I have money and I go to Main Street and I walk in and I can spend money on these beautiful earrings that somebody just made? What happens with money? You don't have it. It's something that just keeps moving. So really your only question is, do I want to be a conduit for more energy, for more money, for more of this resource? And the answer is 100% absolutely you do. And the reason I'm really sitting here is because we need more women with checkbooks. We need more women to vote with a check. Because when you see what happens in Texas and you get upset, instead of saying something to someone and hoping they're going to do something about it, you say, you know what? I'm going to do something about it. Okay. So the time is up on women not being abundant. There's no good reason for it. So that's what we're doing this week. So I'm going to give you a couple now little fun updates. So we're going to give you homework every single day. Okay. So we're going to post it in this Facebook group in about 10 minutes. And it's going to be super simple, just like some really cute questions you're going to answer. And you're going to post your answer in the Facebook group for this, for this workshop. And by just posting your answers, you're going to be entered into a raffle. We're going to pick three of you and we're going to give you we're going to give you these really cute prizes. I think today it's like a Tiffany's necklace, Colleen, yep. which is really like, we want to give you the feeling of like, ooh, abundant things. Ooh, I like this. Mm -mm -mm. So we're going to do that homework assignment every day. We're going to come back tomorrow and we're going to have a bonus day on Thursday. And we're going to do that one on Zoom, still streaming in here if you want to watch it here. But that one, we can actually hang out all of us on a Zoom screen so that we can like chill together and all of that and answer questions and have fun. But the next few days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we're going to be here just doing like this. And we have so much more we want to share with you. And I want to say to you, in case you're already like, Kath, I feel it. You're my person. And I do want to work with you. I'm not going to get into all the details on how exactly I run three-month programs. But I will tell you that you will hear in a couple days that we have some fast action bonuses for those of you who are going to join this program. And if you want to just take a look at it, um, you can get in on that. And if you want to see it, you can go to kathyheller.com slash join. And you could already grab your seat if you know, like, oh, no, 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 I want to spend three months with her live and do this together. Meanwhile, we're going to be here doing this work together. Type a one in the chat if you already feel like you got a lot out of today. Type a one in the chat if you feel like you got more than you expected. Type a one in the chat if you feel like something really clicked today. Awesome. So I see that. Um, Emma is here. Diane said, join it. It's so worth it. Stephanie said one. Elizabeth said you rock. Oh, I had so much fun. Um, I think one of the funnest parts of being a uh, part of the experiences that we create is you can tell like there's no scripts, there's just presence and so much love. And we will continue to hold for your highest and best. And after you spend a little time in that energy, it really starts to change. It really starts to move you into more alignment. And so I hope that you will make the time this week to come back tomorrow. How many of you are going to come back tomorrow? So we're going to keep going. And I know that we covered a lot today, but you'd be surprised. There's so much more I want to cover with you guys. And so I can't wait. Colleen's excited. My team is excited. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow at noon Eastern. If you want, in the meantime, you can subscribe to my podcast, which is free. You could go listen to that Deepak Chopra episode. You could go listen to the Marion Williamson episode. They're so good. Hear it from them. 
and my podcast. You can go to kathyheller.com slash podcast to find it, or you can search for don't keep your day job on Apple podcasts or wherever you listen and come follow me on Instagram and say hello, because I check all my DMs. And so if you're having fun right now, and you're like, I want to say hi to Kathy, I will literally see it myself. And I'll be able to write you back. Go onto my Instagram at kathy.heller, Kathy's with a C, obviously. And if you feel like you got so much out of today and you want to tell your friends, like, guys, get in on this, come, come be a part of this. It's free. It's so good. Then take a screenshot right now and post this in your Instagram stories and tag me at kathy.heller and tell your friends to come join because I really do think that this is the kind of work that is going to change the world. And I'm so grateful to have gotten this time to spend with you. You guys made it so easy. There was such incredible energy. I mean, honestly, we, we live in a world where people are on the internet all the time and there's a lot of yucky energy. Have you seen what's going on in this chat? The people who self-select and have come to be a part of this workshop, Colleen, how lucky are we? I it's know. So blessed. Such high vibes. Like yeah. it was just so beautiful. So we are going to go even further tomorrow. Love you so much. Do your homework so you can enter the raffle and we'll see you tomorrow.